Hi there, Fabian Claus here from the Guyana Revenue Authority. This week we will be focusing on the February 28th due date. This due date is for employers to submit what is known as employers' returns or forms 2. And we'll tell you about the legal obligations of employers during this period and we'll show them how to submit these returns the easy way. Focus on GRA begins right now. Welcome to Focus on GRA. This is a production of the Ghana Revenue Authority of Information for Taxpayer Education. The last day of the month, February, is an important date for employers. It's the due date for the submission of employers' returns or Forms 2. The Income Tax Act requires employers to declare particulars about their employees, that is, their names and places of residence, the payments and allowances made for those persons in respect of that employment, and the amount of tax deducted or withheld from the emolument of every person. With the upgrade of the GRA's tax administration software, the Ghana Revenue Authority now offers a facility for employers to submit and manage PAYE submissions online. I'm here to tell you all about it and help you get started. An employer's return of Forms 2 is a declaration by employers about their employees. That is, the employment type, the amount of salaries, wages, commissions, overtime, or other emoluments paid during the preceding year. The deductions allowed during the preceding year, that is, statutory deductions and NIS contributions and income tax deducted. Preceding year means the period January to December 2021. Now, in 2021, the GRA changed from the manual, which required employers to prepare the return, summary sheet, and the spreadsheet in triplicate before submitting to the Ghana Revenue Authority. However, with the upgrade of our tax administration software to the Optimal Revenue Management System, the GRA is requiring employers to submit these returns via its e-services platform. The online system requires submission of one document that consolidates the employee's details below and the employer's summary, which you would see above. Here is a glimpse of what the return looks like. The first thing employers should know is that the file containing this information about the employees, which is usually prepared in a spreadsheet, must be submitted in a comma-separated values or CSV file. And a CSV file allows for easy transfer and access to files containing large chunks of data. The GRS provided a template of the CSV file to assist employers. The template is available for download via GRA's website, gra.gov.gy, in the Forms menu and under the subheading PAYE Electronic Template New. There is also an accompanying guide and an example available to assist employers in the process. Now, when you open the file, you will see information already included, but this is for illustrative purposes, and you can always replace this information with the data of your own. But before you get started, we advise employers to read carefully the instructions above regarding the correct way to input the data in the rows and columns above, and there's also a guide in the forms menu, which I, I showed you earlier. So for example, the employee's taxpayer identification number must be the correct TIN. If it's incorrect, it will result in the wrong account being updated, or it will also result in the employee having to contact the GRA's registration section to have the TIN information corrected, etc. all of which are cause for the delays, which you don't want as an employer or an employee. Employee's number, this refers to the unique number your entity assigns to each employee, that is, if one exists. If an employee only has one name, you enter it in the last name column. Middle name and address must also be correctly included. Pay frequency column, this uh, requires you to indicate whether employees were daily, weekly, or monthly paid. These words must be clearly spelled out with no abbreviations or acronyms. Period employed requires you to specify the total number of months an employee worked with you for the year. If an employee worked for only part of the year, then adjust accordingly using their employment start and or end dates. Year meaning the preceding year, 2021. Employment type, it requires you to state whether the employee was either full-time or part-time. 
and the allowable values are full dash time or part dash time. The value 7A column requires you to enter the total salary, wage, commission, overtime, or other emolument paid for the period. Please do not include any commas, full stops, dollar signs, or other uh, separators in the number. Further, if you click on the space bar after inputting the total salary, an error would show up because the space bar will be read as an additional character. The same applies to the other columns, value 7B and value 7C, which applies to taxable and non-taxable allowances, respectively, total income, personal allowance, employees' NIS contributions, deductions allowed, and tax deducted. The last column, which requires the employee's date of birth, must be entered as follows, year, month, date. Now, above each column is the employer's summary including the employer's TIN, company name, filing period, address, total number of employees, their total salaries paid, deductions allowed, taxes paid, etc. In addition, the summary information must match the details provided in the column below. So if there are seven employees listed in the TIN column, the summary information must reflect the number seven. Once you're satisfied that the sheet is accurately filled, the employer must proceed to click the Save as CSV tab, which is located on the left-hand corner of the screen, to create the CSV file. We also wish to advise employers that in addition to the template GRA has provided, employers can also use any other payroll software that creates a CSV file in the prescribed format. The next important stage before submitting the file or uploading the file to eServices is to pass it through a validation check. And the validation check ensures that the file meets all the requirements for submission. Now, the GRA has a feature on its website that provides for this validation process. The feature is available in Calculation and Tools, which is on the GRA's website. You simply go back to the GRA's homepage. You click on Calculators and Tools in the middle menu. Once inside, you click on File Format Validator. You will be required to select the tax type, in this case, PAYE after which you will upload the file saved on your computer. After the file is selected, click on Validate PAYE. Any errors on the file will be displayed automatically to you. Once errors are detected, you then have to reopen the file and make all the necessary corrections. Once there are no other errors detected, the file format validator will indicate that the check has been completed, paving the way for you to submit via eServices. You must have an eServices account to submit the return. Uh, find out how to register for an eServices uh, account by visiting GRA's YouTube channel and clicking on the Signing Up for eServices uh, video demo. It's also available on GRA's uh, Facebook page. Submission of the return is as easy as one, two, three. But before we go, we have to take a quick commercial break. Employees, it's time to start requesting your 7B slip from your employers. This is an important document that is needed in the preparing and filing of your income tax return on or before April 30. You must ensure that your TIN ID and period worked are correctly stated on your 7B slip. You must also ensure that your slip is signed and stamped by your employer, finance or accounts officer. Remember, the deadline for 2021 income tax payment and filing return is April 30, 2022. Don't forget, you can file your tax returns on online using GRA's e-service. Visit the GRA's website www.gra.gov.gy or call Tax Advisory Services on 227-6060 extension 8000 for more information on signing up for e-service. GRA, your partner in development. Great, so we're talking about submitting your returns via e-services, that is employer's returns. Employer's returns are due February 28th and submitting via e-services is the easiest possible way to do so. So how do you submit? After you would have created this uh, file in the CSV format, you go to the e-services site, e-services.gra.gov.gy, 
Uh, you enter your login credentials, provided that you would have already signed up for eServices. You go to the Returns tab, which is at the top, select File a Return uh, in the Dropbox as the tax type. Select Pay as you earn reconciliation. This is very important. Ensure that you select Pay as you earn reconciliation, which represents the Form 2 or Employer's Returns, and not Pay as you earn, which is the Form 5 or Monthly Submission. The next step is to select Year of Assessment, which would be this current year, 2022. Then you click Start Return. You will then be informed that you are about to file a return for the said period and date. Upload your file, the file that you have on your, your computer, that is the CSV file, and then click Save and Continue. Now, eServices will indicate if there are other errors to the file that require correction, similar to the validator. In this case, my file has an invalid tin, so I will make the necessary corrections to the file and then re-upload. Once you re-upload, save and continue. You click save and continue. You will be required next to click the checkbox. And the checkbox is to confirm that the information submitted is true and correct, just like the declaration. When that is completed, you then click Submit Return to complete the process. I'm joined by Mr. Risha Bob Semple, the manager of GRS Tax Advisory Services section. Now, Risha, welcome to the program. Thank you, Fabian. So we're dealing with employers' returns, and previously we were giving a detailed demo of how to prepare and submit those returns. Uh, we had some employers tuning in who uh, wanted to ask some questions, so we gave them the opportunity, and that's why we invited you. Uh, one employer wants to know some of the common errors that are usually made that uh, should be avoided when preparing these returns. Okay, so you've, uh, you would have already submitted your Form 5s, your monthly returns, every month of the year. Come, April, come February 28, you're required to submit your Form 2s. We have our online services and we have been encouraging employers to ensure that they sign up for e-services. That way, it's an easy process for them to file their returns online. No need to come into the GRA to do so. Those employees, employers who um, perhaps they are not technologically savvy and they have not yet employed someone to do their Form 2s and submit, submit that information online and they're still filing the manual information to us, we are encouraging them to ensure that they have their signatures on the forms that they signed, like they signed them, that they stamp it, that they are to ensure that they put their names because we find that persons are submitting their Form 2s even without the, their, the name of the company or the name of the individual on those Form 2s. And we cannot identify which company it's coming from if you do not put your name or your TIN on that Form 2. Okay, so that's very important that the companies or a self-employed individual who has employees do so. Great. Thank you very much, Ms. Narisha Bob Semple, the manager of GRA's Tax Advisory Services section, for facilitating answers to questions from a few employers. Uh, this was in relation to employers' returns. But if you have other questions, feel free to contact us at the numbers listed at the end of our program. And that brings us to the end of Focus on GRA for this week. Uh, thank you for watching. We would encourage you to visit our website for more information, www.gra.gov.gy. And you can also contact us via email, grapublicrelations at gmail.com. Fabian Klaus saying stay safe for now, take good care of yourselves and each other.